tonight from Nashville. Mark Rick brings his Georgia Bulldogs to town to do battle with the Vanderbilt Commodores on SEC College Football Saturday. It's all about tailgating, flag waving, green shaking face, breaking hell, raising celebrating trash, talking no mistake. Crowd loving spiritual ritual kind of passion. It's a big skin weekend. I'm a man of big band, big town, big place, prime town. SEC College Football Saturday is presented by Coors Light. We walk you to Nashville on an absolutely gorgeous evening for football. In the SEC East, it's Georgia against Vanderbilt. And by virtue of South Carolina's win this afternoon at Mississippi State, the Gamecocks take a half a game lead in these standings. Georgia must win to keep pace. Good evening, everybody. Bob Rathman, Tim Couch. It's great to have you with us tonight. This Georgia Bulldog team is red hot. They've won four in a row, and Tim, they're doing it with defense. The unit has given up just two touchdowns over their last 16 quarters of play, and the linebacking core, deep, talented, and playing great football right oh, now. Oh, they really are. You said it right, Bob, and one of those guys that's playing outstanding football for them at that position is Jarvis Jones. He's a guy that creates a lot of havoc in the opposing offense's backfield. He can also rush the passer. He has three sacks on the season, so he's a very versatile linebacker. And also, Michael Gilliard is another linebacker on this football team that has a ton of speed. He can find the football. He creates turnovers. He was SEC Defensive Player of the Week last, last week versus Tennessee. And one of the big reasons that these linebackers can run free, the great play of the nose men, John Jenkins and Kwame Gathers. No doubt about it. When you're in a 3-4 defense like Georgia plays, you have to have those big nose guards that can eat up some of those offensive linemen. And they, they require a double team, which allows those linebackers to get and run free and use their athletic ability to make tackles all over the field. Of course, any conversation about great defenders in the SEC must include Vanderbilt linebacker Chris Marr. Chris Marr has been a great player here at Vanderbilt. He makes a lot of tackles for this football team. He's kind of the quarterback of that defense. He gets them in and out of checks at the line of scrimmage, does an outstanding job. You'll hear his name a lot tonight. And speaking of quarterbacks, we understand that Larry Smith will get the start tonight ahead of Jordan Rogers. Yeah, it looks like Larry's going to get the uh, get the nod here tonight. He's missed some practice time coming off an injury from last week. But as usual, Vanderbilt will use both guys. Jordan Rogers will see some play in time tonight. Both of those guys are kind of different in styles, but very capable of getting the job done for this Vanderbilt offense. Can the Commodores spring the upset? They have not beaten the Georgia Bulldogs in Nashville in 20 years. Will tonight be the night? We'll find out. With the starting lineups and the kickoff tonight from Nashville, Tennessee, it's Georgia and Vandy coming up on SEC College Football Saturday. Thank you, Andre. Vanderbilt Stadium here in Nashville getting set for these East rivals, Georgia and Vanderbilt. And moments ago, the Bulldogs take the field. and the Vanderbilt Commodores. And this Georgia game is a very special one for many members on this Vandy team. We welcome in our sideline reporter, Christina Acra, for more on that. All right, thanks, Bob. When you look into the Vanderbilt roster, the state of Georgia is the most represented. 19 players and about eight starters on Vanderbilt called Georgia home. I want to talk to one in particular, cornerback Casey Hayward, who told me he's from Perry, Georgia. And, you know, with the Georgia Bulldogs coming in, there's a little bit more motivation tonight. Not everybody can go play for their home state school. But he said, you know what, we're going to go out there and play this game just as an intense and hard as we would any other game on our schedule. We're ready to go out and compete, and we're ready for the Georgia Bulldogs. Hayward was a terrific quarterback at Perry, Georgia, as he performs on the defensive unit for 39-year-old head coach James Franklin in his first year at the helm here at Vanderbilt. And, of course, acquiring Georgia talent, not a problem for Mark Richt and the Georgia Bulldogs. In fact, Mark Richt has 
come into this one today after that big win at Knoxville last week over Tennessee, which was his 100th in 36, 136 games as the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. Fantastic night weather-wise. 67 degrees is our game time temperature, and the wind is Zephyr out of the west-northwest at 7, and clear skies above Music City, USA. Georgia won the toss. They elected to defer, so Georgia is set to kick off at Blair Walsh, and Vanderbilt is set to receive at the south end of the stadium. Andre Hal, number 23 at the bottom of your screen, Stephen Clark, number 12, back at their own five-yard line, and we are ready for SEC College Football Saturday. tackle loose ball and we'll see if Vandy was able to claim it Georgia has had uh, great success in the Mark Rick years and special teams and it will belong to the Commodores so the offensive unit comes onto the field for Vanderbilt and it is indeed Larry Smith at quarterback yeah, we're going to see Larry Smith, as we talked about in the open. Larry had an injury last week. He missed some practice time early in the week, but he's going to get the start. He finished up the week as a starter in practice. He's a tough kid. He's got a live arm, but he has to become more accurate with the football and make a little bit better decisions, but very capable of leading this Vanderbilt offense. One of the big questions before the house as Vandy gets started first at 10, can they run the football? They come out with an empty backfield, and Smith swings it to the near side and nothing doing at all for Zach Stacy. Boy, Georgia all over that, led by one of our key defenders, our Toyota key defenders, featuring Bakari Rambo out of that uh, free safety spot. Amarlo Herrera is a true freshman, still holding down that starting spot and line back. They go the other way, same result, and the tackle is made by Brandon Boykin. You see Vanderbilt come out in this football game. They're trying to get something going offensively, get Larry Smith in a groove. They've thrown two bubble screens, but Georgia is all over this. They've seen on film that this is what Vanderbilt likes to do. They don't challenge you down the field very often, so Georgia's going to be sitting on these routes all night. Two pass completions for minus five yards. Stacy, and he is taken down at the 19-yard line by Sean Williams, and Vanderbilt is three and out on their first possession. Well, excellent job by Sean Williams right here, just reading the screen and coming up from his safety position to make that play and forcing Vanderbilt on a three and out on their first possession. So the Commodores get the kicking team onto the field, and Richard Dent averages 40. 2.7 per punt into the game and back deep for the Georgia Bulldogs. It's going to be Clark. And we've got the good pressure on the punter. Now Boykin back pedaling and he'll fair catch it and take it out of bounds at the 38 yard line. 43 yard boots and Georgia with very good field position. And their quarterback, of course, is Aaron Murray. Aaron Murray has been one of the top quarterbacks in the SEC so far this year. He's a very athletic kid, has a lot of mobility, throws the football extremely well, and has been outstanding for this Georgia offense so far. Aaron Murray had a big day against Vanderbilt last season. Two touchdown passes and a 43-0 win. Passed for a career best 287 yards. Samuels getting the start and he'll take the ball up to the 48 yard line for a big gain and another a first down for Georgia Kenny Ladler the tackle you mentioned it Bob Samuel getting the start over Crowell tonight he's Georgia has uh, three backs that they rotate in with Crowell Samuel and Thomas you'll see all three of these guys tonight get a lot of carries a 12 yard pickup on first down out to the 50 three receivers Carson Charles, the tight end. 
This one's batted down and a diving stab incomplete. What terrific play by Archie Barnes as he nearly picked off that pass. Outstanding athletic ability by Archie Barnes right here. He comes off the slot blitz right in Aaron Murray's face and just reads the eyes of Aaron Murray and is able to get a hand on that thing. And one, if that ball is in the air just a tick uh, longer, Archie Barnes runs under that thing and takes it back for a pick six. Charles now moves in as the tight end. Samuels, yardage after the first contact of five to the Vanderbilt 45-yard line. The Vanderbilt defensive unit led up front by Tim Fugger at defensive end. He's got three sacks already this season. We talked about Chris Barr, the SEC's active leader in career tackles. And Trey Wilson is expected to take a lot of those one-on-one -on -one coverages tonight at his cornerback spot. Murray out of the gun on third down. Complete. And a first down for Georgia at the 37-yard line. Orson Charles. Eight-yard pickup. And Orson Charles is a guy that Aaron Murray feels really confident in, especially in those third down situations. They get him matched up on a strong safety. He's just too big physically for strong safeties to cover. Hartford sets him up in an eye. Murray sacked and dropped at the 45-yard line. Sean Richardson on a safety blitz. Well, the defensive coordinator for Vanderbilt, Bob Shoup, told us on first down, he is not going to allow Georgia to get yards on first down. He will bring blitzes. He will bring Sean Richardson down in the box. That time you saw him bring Sean on the blitz. He's able to get to Aaron Murray for the big sack. A loss of six. to the 32. Or check it to Michael Bennett with the catch for Georgia. Richardson coming over to make the tackle. And he's going to set up a third and five for the Dogs. That pass play picks up 11. Georgia in search of its fifth consecutive win. Quite a bounce back after their own two starts. Murray throws. Just past the fingertips of Tavares King. We saw that last week a couple times. Tavares King was able to get behind the secondary at Tennessee, and Aaron Murray just overthrew him both times, and we see it again there. King had a step that time for a possible touchdown. Blair Walsh has come in for Georgia to attempt. A field goal of right at 50 yards. He's got the leg and hits the upright. No good. He had plenty of foot, but it hit the left upright. And Georgia comes away with no points on its first possession. We're underway with SEC College Football Saturday from Nashville. Pass avocados. Kicks off tonight's game from Music City, USA. A scoreless first five minutes here at Vanderbilt tonight. Now Georgia goes on the defensive as Vanderbilt gets the football back first and 10 from their own 32-yard line. The veteran Larry Smith at quarterback for the Commodores. Junior Zach Stacy with him in the backfield. Pressure, but a completed pass. And Jonathan Kraus, one of those Georgians that Christina was talking about. Kraus is from Snellville. He makes the catch, and Brandon Boykin comes up with another tackle. 
six-yard pickup. A good job right there by Larry Smith. He wanted to work the football into Jordan Matthews. He had him matched up one-on-one -on -one over there with Sanders Cummings, but Sanders had excellent coverage. Good job of finding your outlet receiver coming back to Jonathan Krause right there, getting a nice completion on first down. Muscled out of bounds in the Georgia Territory at the 47. A 14-yard gain. This is what Vanderbilt is going to have to do if they want to be in this football game. They're going to have to run block this huge Georgia defensive line. And that time, excellent job by that offensive line. Logan Stewart, Ryan Seymour over there on that left side did a nice job of opening up a hole for Zach Stacy. And that run of 14 yards matches Zach Stacy's longest run of the season. First and 10 at the Dogs 47. And a timeout has been taken by Vanderbilt. 8.53 remaining as head coach James Franklin gathers his offensive unit. We'll step aside with our score, Georgia Vandy, nothing, nothing. Thank you, Andre. 8.53 left in this opening period. Vanderbilt is working with a first down and 10 at the Georgia 47-yard line. Second possession for the Vandy offense. Larry Smith has time. Now chased and fires it out of bounds. Let's take a look at our forward keys to the game. Well, the four keys for Georgia is going to be to take advantage of Vandy. They, Vandy's going to come into this game and blitz this uh, Bulldog offense. They're going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside to make big plays. And for Vanderbilt, they have to be better on third downs. They're only con converting 18%, which is worse than the entire country. They're going to have to find a way to keep drives alive and move the chains. Second and 10. We'll talk more about the Vandy blitzing when Georgia gets the ball back. But they came with blitz after blitz on that first possession. Inside handoff and another big hole. Seymour, first down Vanderbilt at the Georgia 36. Boy, the offensive line is creating some openings. They really are, and that was the question coming into this game. Could they block those big nose guards and these linebackers from Georgia? Georgia's been doing an outstanding job the last four games of stopping the run, but so far, this Vanderbilt offense has come out, and they're doing a great job of opening up holes for the Vanderbilt running backs. From the 36, first and 10. On the reverse, double reverse. To the outside. And down the sideline. Still alive. Inside the 10 and out of bounds. Casey Hayward comes up with the football. Look at him sprint to the sideline. What a play. Well, Vanderbilt getting very creative right here, putting Casey Hayward in the game on offense and doing the double reverse. And you see the athletic ability out in open space. It's hard to get him to the ground. He has great return skills. We saw him. This season on a couple interception returns, he had took one back for a touchdown. You see when he gets the ball in his hands, he's electrifying. Taking a play out of the Georgia playbook when they insert a guy like Boykin into the game. Now it's first and goal for Vanderbilt. At the six. Play action to the middle. Boykin with the interception. And Georgia comes right up with the turnover. Boy, this, I'm telling you, this kid is terrific. Offense, defense, special teams, amazing. Well, you said it, Bob. Brandon Boykin is all over the field for this Bulldog offense, but this is simply just a bad decision by Larry Smith. He's throwing that football, trying to work it in there to Chris Boyd, but there's three guys right there. Simply throw the football away. This is a, a kind of a, you know, there's you either tuck it or throw it over his head, but you don't force that football, especially in that area of the field, into triple coverage. So Boykin with the interception. And Georgia will have it first at 10 at their own 20. For Boykin, it's his second interception of the season and the 10th of his career. And Boykin stays in the game. They'll work out of the Wildcat. 
So Boykin gets the interception, and on the next play, takes the snap from center and looks for a hole. A loss of one. Excellent job by Chris Marv right there of recognizing that Brandon Boykin was in the backfield. He's going to get the ball. They're going to run the football with him. Chris Marv all over that play. Aaron Murray back in on second down and 11. But Murray breaks out as a receiver. They stay with Boykin at quarterback out of the Wildcat. And a whistle blows the play dead. Matt Austin is our referee this evening. Prior to the snap, false start, 68 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Well, we promised to talk about the Vanderbilt blitzing that you saw so much of in that first series. Yeah, absolutely. The first series, Vanderbilt came out. They blitzed Georgia on every snap. They feel really confident that their two corners, Trey Wilson and Casey Hayward, can play one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. They're going to try to get to and hit Aaron Murray all night. Toss sweep to Samuel. Good hard running. Takes it out to the 25-yard line. A gain of 11 before Rob Lohr made the tackle. Third and five. Talk about one-on-one -on -one coverage. Keep in mind, Georgia's without Malcolm Mitchell, their true freshman and leading receiver. Hold a handy last week at Tennessee. Out tonight, off week next week, then should be back for Florida. Pressure. Incomplete, and Wilson had King wrapped up, but no flag. Uh, and you see why Bob Shoup, the defensive coordinator, feels so confident that he could put Trey Wilson out on an island on Tavares King. Vanderbilt brings another blitz. They get to Aaron Murray. They're going to force him to throw that football quick, and Trey Wilson's all over Tavares King. Drew Butler, one of the nation's best. Ready to punt it away, and back deep, Jonathan Krause for Vanderbilt, standing at his own 30. Time pressure, but they couldn't get the block. Now Krause will fair catch it at the 30-yard line. 45-yard punt for Drew Butler and company. A timeout with 5:38 to go. First quarter, Georgia Vanderbilt scoreless. There's Zuga. He's ready. Nothing, nothing. 5:38 to go. First quarter here at Vanderbilt Stadium. Bob Rathbun, Tim Couch, Christina Acra. And our great crew here on SEC College Football Saturday. Vanderbilt's got it back first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. Larry Smith at quarterback. Good pitch to Stacy. Good pursuit by Georgia. Boykin couldn't finish the tackle. And Stacy is pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Sanders Cummings. Mixing it up with the opposition, separated by the officials, as Vanderbilt is going to have it out to about the 35-yard line. They'll mark it just shy of that spot. Sanders Cummings is a junior from Augusta. He's been playing terrific football, as has this entire defensive unit for Georgia in this four-game winning streak. Not much on the edges tonight. No, not a lot. You know, like we said on that opening drive, Georgia is ready for these type of passes from Vanderbilt. You saw Brandon Boykin right here doing an outstanding job of just fighting off the block long enough before 36 Sean Williams could come over there and help him out and make that play. At the 38-yard line. This is what we were talking about earlier, Tim. These third down conversions. Georgia leads the SEC in preventing first downs. And Vandy has had all kinds of problems trying to convert. This is going to be very close, I think, that they made it. Let's see. Uh, yes, they did, says Matt Austin. 
It is a first down for Vanderbilt at the 41-yard line. You know, I'm surprised at the success so far in this game that Vanderbilt is having running the football right up the middle of this Georgia defense. They've had three runs that have been successful for them now, so you have to think Seymour and Stewart doing a great job up front on the on the Bulldog defensive line. This is a Georgia defensive team that limited Tennessee to minus 20 on the ground last week in Knoxville. Stacy upended as he gets over the 45. They'll mark him down at the 48. And Stacy slow coming to his feet. Seven yard pickup, second and three. You see the hit here. Stacy, they're trying to get him the football out in space, doing a good job of getting up the field. But you see Sanders Cummings coming up and delivering the big hit on Zach Stacy. It takes the knee at the 42. Vanderbilt tonight, prior to that botched snap, had 60 yards in six carries against Georgia in this first quarter. Keep in mind, Vanderbilt has rushed the ball for only 45 yards in their last two games combined. Yeah, absolutely, in this Georgia defense, Bob, the last four games, they've only given up 133 yards on the ground combined, so doing a great job of just absolutely shutting down teams' running games. As you mentioned, minus 20 yards for Tennessee on the ground last week versus this Bulldog defense. Smith batted down. Terrific job by Avery Jones, number 93. To knock that pass down on third and set up a punt. Yeah, great recognition right here by Avery Jones. He knew he wasn't going to be able to get to Larry Smith on the quick on the quick throw, so he saw Larry Smith's eyes and just tried to get in the throwing lane and was able to get a hand on that one. Once again, Richard Kent. He had to punt it, and Brandon Boykin, always a threat, backpedaling to his 22-yard line. side of the foot this will hit take a Georgia bounce and will be touched at the 30 yard line down to the field and Christina thanks Bob you guys have talked about how this Georgia defense has just improved over the weeks and defensive coordinator Todd Grantham told us this week the defense is kind of getting that swagger they need to be consistently good he said you know these guys have really bought in and understand the importance of playing every play they've created good habits at practice and also created enough adversity at practice to help them get ready for game time you know he said everybody can play when they're comfortable but we've been able to maintain that aggression for 60 minutes on game day and the biggest thing is to focus on the very next series Georgia first at 10 at its own 30. And this is Carlton Thomas to the 39-yard line. Haven't seen Isaiah Crowell yet tonight. We'll try to find out more if there's a discipline issue involved. Carlton Thomas, a junior from Frostproof, Florida, averages five yards a carry. Picks up nine on that one. Second and one. Thomas again found the smallest of holes and gets the first down out to the 43. Chris Marr of the tackle. You have to expect Vanderbilt to come with a big blitz. They've been bringing Sean Richardson, the strong safety, down in the box. They brought him on three blitzes already. Maybe look for Georgia right here to do a little play action pass, try to get Tavares King the football down the field here on first down. Good tackle at the 45-yard line by Kenny Ladler, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Second down and five. King and Bennett go wide to the top of your screen. Charles tight left. Bandy's defense rises up on second down, stopping Carlton Thomas, Chase Garnham, number 36, 
Credited with the first hit, and there is Isaiah Crowell. He's yet to play in this game. And he's getting a little itchy over there. Yes, he sideline. is. He wants the football in his hands. It's hard for Isaiah Crowell to sit over there on those sidelines. He's been such a big part of this offense in recent weeks. He's dying to get back out there and help this Bulldog offense. Murray tucks and runs to the 43, first down Georgia. This is one of the things that Aaron Murray brings to the table. Not only can he throw the football down the field, but he makes good decisions. You see him go through his first and second progression, then all of a sudden he sees the lane open up. He knows he only needs six yards to keep the chains alive, so he's able to use his athletic ability to do that. A 10-yard pickup for the quarterback. Final seconds of this opening period. At the Vanderbilt 43. Murray comes under center out of the eye. Thomas hit and dropped. After a gain of about a yard, a two-yard pickup officially, Al Owens the tackle, and that brings us to the end of the opening period. The Commodores at home against the Georgia Bulldogs. And a scoreless first quarter in the books in Nashville. Just about set to start the second quarter. No score, our Hyundai game summary. Brandon Boykin's interception came in the end zone to keep the Commodores off the board. The big story, the fact that Vanderbilt is moving the ball against the Georgia defense, and they're doing it pretty consistently on the ground, up the middle, which we did not expect. But they, they have had success running the football. Isaiah Crowell sat out the first quarter. First play of the second quarter, he's back in and gets the football. And Georgia's leading ball carrier picks up a couple of yards to the 41-yard line. Crowell, the true freshman from Columbus, Georgia, has been one of the SEC's best ball carriers this year. In fact, he comes in number four in the conference at 573 yards to date. He has been battling a couple of injuries, the right wrist and right ankle. But we did not know until kickoff that he would be held out of that first quarter. Third and long. Georgia's two for four on third downs tonight. Murray, near side, and stretching out is Austin Charles, but he will not have the first down. He stepped out at the 45-yard line, Casey Hayward defending. Yeah, he stepped out, he tried to reach the football across for the first down, but he got a foot out of bounds before he was able to extend the ball over for a first down. See Orson very upset with himself. He felt like he could, could have converted that if he knew where he was on the field a little more, a little more field awareness so you don't go out of bounds right there. Blair Walsh missed a 50-yarder, hit the upright in the first quarter. This one a 53-yarder. He had plenty of leg that first time. Just needs to adjust the sights. He's got plenty of leg on this one. And this one is good. He had a 56-yarder for his career best earlier in the season against Coastal Carolina. Nails this one from 53 as Georgia takes the lead. In every game this season, scores first. A nine-play, 35-yard drive that ends in the 53-yard field goal. There will be a return. This one by Stephen Clark. Still going. Clark lost his balance at the 31-yard line. Ten for Vanderbilt from their own 32-yard line. Inside handoff, but not much for Seymour as Jarvis Jones jumped on his back. And we talked about Jarvis Jones in the opener, how he creates havoc in the backfield. He's got he's second in the SEC with five and a half tackles for a loss so far this season. You see, he can get back there in a hurry coming off that edge. Game of two. Larry Smith has gone the distance at quarterback for Vanderbilt. Some late pressure and throws it out of bounds, intended for Chris Boyd. 
Smith is now five of nine for 24 yards. Yeah, I think Larry's doing a nice job so far in this football game of distributing the football. He had the one mistake down in the red zone, but so far they haven't asked him to throw the football down the field a lot. A lot of the stuff has been these bubble screens out to the side. Eventually, Vanderbilt's going to have to take some shots down the field. Smith. Intercepted. Georgia has it down to the 24-yard line. Sean Williams comes up with the interception. Larry Smith was belted right when he released the football by Avery Jones, and that set up the pick for Williams. Yeah, no doubt about it. Avery Jones forces Larry Smith to throw the football a little bit before he wants to and off of his back foot, and Sean Williams just reads that route right there and jumps it before Larry Smith doesn't even have a chance to see Sean Williams coming down from his strong safety position, jumping right, right in front of his wide receiver. For Williams, his second interception of the season. He returned it 16 yards. Georgia has it first and 10 at the Vanderbilt 24. Burrell is the tailback. And Bruce Figgins the fullback. And that pass short hops the receiver incomplete. Intended for Tavares King. I think Archie Barnes right there influenced that play again. We saw him on the first possession that Georgia had tip one and was almost able to come up with the interception. That time he got right in the throwing lane of Aaron Murray and forced the low throw. shoots his man. Well, that time Georgia goes with the full out play action fake. You saw Aaron Murray kind of put his head down, try to put the ball behind his back, but Sean Richardson didn't buy it. They're trying to get Aaron White on the wheel route right there and get Sean Richardson to come up like he has been all game to stop that run. But excellent job of playing assignment football from Sean Richardson. More heat and incomplete. And wow, what great pressure by Vanderbilt as they come through. Tim Fuger led the charge. Yeah, this Vanderbilt defense is playing outstanding. Tim Fuger puts the pressure. They're trying to set up a screen to Isaiah Crowell, but Fuger gets on Murray before the, before the player is able to develop. But even if he did complete a bob, Chris Marv had that thing sniffed out well, and he was all over Isaiah Crowell. So Blair Walsh comes right back out onto the field. And this will be a, they're going to call this one a 42-yarder. The kick by Blair is no good. So Walsh is one for three tonight. And it remains a 3-0 Georgia lead. <laughs> That's great. I don't know how you felt about the red helicopter there, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> and now for Vanderbilt. Rodgers at quarterback. Zach Stacy met at the line of scrimmage. Jarvis Jones was there. And so Georgia that time, Tim, plugging things up on the inside. Yeah, they really did, and Jarvis Jones did an outstanding job that time. The play started away from him, but instead of chasing the ball, he stayed at home, played his assignment. Zach Stacy ends up coming right back to him, and he makes the tackle. So Rodgers now goes back to pass. Looks incomplete. Defended superbly by Sean Williams. We have the feeling, and you have the feeling, I shouldn't take any credit for it, but <laughs> Vanderbilt's got to go deep at some point. Yeah, they really do. You know, I talked about it on the first possession that Georgia's all over these short routes. You're going to have to loosen this secondary up because Brandon Boykin, Sanders coming, Sean Williams, they're just getting too many hands on these footballs. You have to make them respect that you will at least take a shot down the field. James Franklin, a former quarterback, and came to Vanderbilt. There is the 
Offensive coordinator at Maryland. Third and eight. Plenty of time. And this one's incomplete. Crowd hollering for a flag. So is the Vanderbilt bench. But it is a defended pass by Cummings. Well, nice job here stepping up in the pocket by Rodgers. He throws it, anticipates that throw, but Sanders Cummings all over number 87, Jordan Matthews. So three and out. And the punt coming to Brandon Boykin. He's in his own 45, so Georgia should get outstanding field position. Gonna be Georgia ball at the Vanderbilt 20 yard line. Chris Conley looked to be the guy that got through after the fumbled snap. Yeah, you see Richard Kent right here. He's just not able to secure the snap. And then he, by the time he's able to get up and kick that, Georgia's all over him. And it sets Georgia up in tremendous field position once again. But they haven't done anything with it. They've had two turnovers on Vanderbilt so far. But Vanderbilt only has given up three points so far in this football game. And under Mark Rick, that is the 21st punt blocked. from the 19-yard line of Vanderbilt. Murray has time to the end zone. Touchdown, King! the one-on-one -on -one matchup all night with Tavares King and Trey Wilson. And Trey Wilson has won those battles, but that time they were able to get Tavares King matched up on number 23, Andre Hall, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And King does a nice job of beating him inside on the post. You see Aaron Murray coming back on the play action fake. Excellent protection up front, and Murray throws a strike for a touchdown. Georgia up 10-0. Andre the Dodge have taken a 10 0 lead. Fourth TD reception for Tavares King. The 14th touchdown pass for Aaron Murray this season. And the blocked punt leads to seven. Andre Howell on the return. Over the 25 to the 26 as we go down to the field. And, Christine, I was a bit surprised that Mike Bobo's calling all these pass plays. I know, right? Well, with that <laughs> touchdown pass, Aaron Murray actually tied offensive coordinator Mike Bobo for fourth on the list of career touchdown passes by a Bulldog quarterback. We asked Bobo about it this week. If it were to happen, he said, yeah, jokingly, that's where we're going to run the ball the entire game. <laughs> but, you know, he said he's really happy with Aaron's progress, how hard he works. He's a perfectionist. He doesn't want to make a mistake with anything. And he spent a lot of time this week connecting deep with Tavares King on those passes. So we saw that right there tonight. Aaron Murray has done just a sensational job in his two years at the helm. He really has. He's just a coach's dream. You know, a guy that's always in the film room, always trying to improve and make himself a better quarterback. Second series for Jordan Rogers. And again, just a yard. For Vanderbilt, as Garrison Smith made the tackle, the sophomore. Jordan Rogers, of course, with terrific bloodlines. His older brother is Aaron, the quarterback of the world champion Green Bay Packers. And Jordan's transferred in a junior college player, then had shoulder surgery and missed the entire spring. And hasn't had nearly the, uh, the reps that Vanderbilt would love to have for that man. They work out of the Wildcat and the whistle blows it dead. Matt Austin to announce the penalty. False start, 67 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. At the spring game, Jordan there with his older brother. And 
and uh, they are very, very close, as you can imagine. Wouldn't be surprised if, if Aaron is watching tonight. Yeah, no doubt about him. What, what better guy to be able to pick his brain for Jordan Rodgers? In my opinion, Aaron Rodgers right now is the best quarterback in the NFL. Rodgers has time. And throws it away. Good pressure by Jarvis Jones of Georgia. Third and, and long here for Vandy. As Mark Rich's team, it's taken a, a bit, but they are seizing control. And that defense is creating these third and longs. They really are, and this is a Vanderbilt team without the huge playmakers on the outside. This is an offense that's not built to convert these type of situations. And the wraparound handoff to Stacy. Zach hit at the 23 and gains just a couple of yards, and a Georgia player is down. How about this handoff? Take a look at it here as we check on Tyson. A pretty nice play right here. They faked the screen out back, and, they, and Jordan Rogers is able to slide that thing around his back to Zach Stacy. but the Bulldog defense didn't buy it on the play, on the, on the throw fake, and, and stayed at home to make that play. Meanwhile, Statesboro senior D'Angelo Tyson went down on that play. And seems to be pointing to his left knee. Take a look and see if we can see what happens to D'Angelo Tyson right here as he comes around and his leg just whips into the back of number 67. That's Wesley Johnson. Just an unfortunate thing right there. Hopefully it's just something that's going to go away here quickly and it's not anything serious for D'Angelo Tyson. Tyson's been dinged up all season long. They moved him over from nose to defensive end and the big man at 6'2", 306. That's a good the sign bench. for D'Angelo Tyson. Anytime you can walk off under your own power, hopefully that's just, uh, you know, maybe a little Charlie horse there in the thigh, something like that. Once again, the Georgia defense is forced to three and out, and Vanderbilt must punt. Ryan Fowler is in the backup punter. Boykin deep at his own 41. Georgia 42-yard line. They throw it out to Andrew East. And Vanderbilt shocks the house with the pump, the uh, fake on the punt. Take a look here. He ends up throwing the football to the center as they fake the punt. Number 34, that's Andrew East. What a play design right there from Vanderbilt. And you know, I can't say that I've ever seen that one, Bob. I, you know, and, and, and Georgia had to be confused with that. That's just an excellent design right there by Vanderbilt and keeps a drive alive for them. And now their defense is able to get over there and get some rest and hopefully they can go down and put some points on the board on this drive. But well, when they shifted the whole line, you figured something yeah, was up. Something was up. It's, I don't I know. I thought it was going to be like a, maybe a rugby kick or something, <laughs> but not the pass. And another infraction. Or a timeout. Timeout Vanderbilt. Timeout Commodore. With 8.59 to go in this second quarter. Georgia leads it 10 to nothing. And a break in the action at Vanderbilt Stadium. We'll be back after this. Here in Music City, USA, Georgia 10-0 over Vanderbilt, 8:59. But the Commodores are driving after the fake punt. They pick up the first down at the Georgia 43. 
And he goes to the spread with three wides to the left of Rodgers, and he fires this one complete. And again, tough on the edge for Wesley Tate. As Vanderbilt, Tim, has tried these bubble screens and swing passes, et cetera, to try to get something on the corners. But the Georgia defense has just been too quick for it. Yeah, they really have. And Brandon Boykin especially, they've tried his side three times. And each time, he's recognized it very quickly. And he's blown that play up before it can get started. And, you know, you talked about the fake punt, Bob. And that's very important, even if Vanderbilt doesn't go down and score on this, because they've started their average starting field position tonight has been at their own 26-yard line. Georgia started basically at midfield on their drive. So at least they flipped field position on the Bulldogs. Stacy will throw. Going deep. Complete. Touchdown, Vanderbilt to Matthews. Franklin is going deep in that playbook, folks. You have to love the creativity that Vanderbilt had on that possession with the fake punt, and then you come back and see the tailback pass for a touchdown. Gary Spear with the extra point. Jordan Matthews with the touchdown reception. Take a look here. You see Zach Stacy just getting the pitch. They're getting Bakari Rambo matched up one-on-one -on, -one on number 87. Jordan Matthews is just going down on a corner pad. And how about the throw from Zach Stacy? That's that would have been an excellent throw from a quarterback, much less a running back. He put that thing right on the money to Jordan to score. And no doubt about it. They took advantage. Anytime you can get a fake punt like that for a conversion, you have to take advantage of those situations. And they're gonna pooch this one to the sideline, and out of bounds it goes. So they give back some of uh, what might have been some good field position on the penalty. So the dogs come out, and they've got 8.21 to work with here in this second period. So Mark Richt has a choice, and Matt Austin wants to know where the dogs would like it. They can take it. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Penalties decline. First out. They'll take the ball where it went out of bounds. Let's go down to Christina. Guys, just before the fake punt, Archie, Bar Archie Barnes, excuse me, took the timeout uh, to go over to the special teams unit and get them fired up. He was telling them, we've got to ride all four quarters. Do not give up. They went out with a ton of energy, pulled off the fake punt, and were able to get into the end zone. And they are fired up down here on the sideline. He's got them going. You know, and you like the aggression by Vanderbilt right there, trying to do the pooch kick, trying to get another possession for that offense. But he didn't convert it. Now George is starting with great field position. Samuel, 46. Richard, Samuel, Richard got the start tonight. He picks up four on this one, giving him 31 yards for the night on four carries. We talked about Vanderbilt's been an offense that struggled so far this season to move the football. Well, right now they have 162 total yards to Georgia's 95. King and Bennett at the bottom of your screen. Two tight ends. And Murray out of the gun. Quick throw to Bennett. To the Vanderbilt. 42 first down, Georgia. Red shirt freshman from Alpharetta. Michael Bennett picks up 11. And Michael Bennett's going to have to be one of the guys to step up. Malcolm Mitchell, their big play wide receiver who was who had a great rapport with Aaron Murray. So Michael Bennett, Marlon Brown, those guys are going to have to step up in place of Malcolm Mitchell. Isaiah Crowell is the setback now for Georgia as Aaron Murray hits the play call from the sideline. Crowell lunging to the 35. Guard of the tackle. Seven minute mark, second period. And a 10-7 Georgia lead, eight yards for Isaiah Crowell. Nice job of vision right there by Isaiah Crowell. That time, Vanderbilt had a Sam Mike blitz. They brought Archie Barnes and Chris Marv to the side that Georgia's running the football to. Crowell able to recognize that quickly, put his foot in the ground, and get backside for a seven-yard game.
Crowell got back to the line, but Rob Lohr was there. Another one of these Vandy defenders, Tim, that you were talking about, who just is playing great football. The SEC Defensive uh, Lineman of the Week after the UConn game. He's had four tackles for losses in that game and six and a half of the season. Yeah, Rob Lohr, he plays that three technique for this Vanderbilt defense. A very, very good athlete at six foot four, 290 pounds. Georgia looking to convert. They go to Crowell, and I think he's got it at the 32. He had to get to about the 32 and a half. The chains will be moved. First down, dogs. Mark Rich Ball Club with a couple of missed scoring opportunities tonight. But holding a three-point lead as we tick under 540 in the second. And Georgia will take a timeout. First time out of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Let's go back in time in our Buick video vault and we take you back to the Vandy Georgia game in Athens and this was a Vanderbilt win Jackson Garrison with a three down three yard touchdown run to put Vandy on top then this beautiful 35 yard touchdown pass to Sean Walker made it 21 13 Vanderbilt Georgia had taken the lead back then Brian Hanfeld with the game winning 33 yard field goal with just two seconds left and Vanderbilt and upset number 14, Georgia 24 to 22. A rare win in this series between these two ball clubs. This is the 72nd meeting and Georgia has won 51 of the first 71. This series dates back to 1893. And great success for Georgia on the road. They have won nine consecutive games here in Nashville. Crowell, a big hole. Pull out to the outside. It's a foot race. And out of bounds at the eight. Well, I talked about it a couple plays ago about his vision. Look at him see the, the hole backside. That time Chris Marv comes on a blitz right up the middle. The center for Georgia, Ben Jones, was able to pick that blitz up. Isaiah Crowell cuts right off of his block for a huge gain and sets Georgia up inside the 10-yard line. 24-yard pickup. First and goal. Crowell. Knocked down at the 11. Terrific pursuit for Vanderbilt, and that time coming up the free safety, Javon Marshall. Well, that time the young freshman tried to do a little too much. You see him dancing. Chris Marv shows right there. Inside, inside, Crowell tries to bounce it outside, but this is the SEC. You can't bounce things out, especially down here in the red zone. If nothing's there, just put your head down, get a couple yards, move on to the next play. A loss of two. Second and goal from the 10. Xander over three in at fullback. The give to Crowell. Scrambles back to the line, picks up a half a yard. Tim Fuger with the first to get to him. Third and goal. So you have to be impressed with the penetration that the Vanderbilt defensive line is able to get right now. This Georgia offensive line is absolutely huge, averaging over 340 pounds on that offensive line. Ninth play of the drive. Samuels come in as the running back. Murray to the end zone. Incomplete. Going for Michael Bennett. A good throw right here by Aaron Murray. Puts the football to the outside where Michael Bennett is the only guy that's going to be able to have a shot to catch that football. Should have been caught right there. Michael Bennett usually comes down with those. A pretty sure-handed wide receiver, but an excellent throw by Aaron Murray. 
27 yard field goal attempt for Walsh. And this time a confident stroke and drills it to make it 13 to 7. So Walsh with his second field goal, two for four in tonight's game. So Aaron Murray leads the dogs on a 10 play 49 yard drive that consumed four minutes and 55 seconds and results in the field goal of 28 yards from Blair Walsh and he'll kick it away now with Georgia leading 13 7 and 326 left in the second quarter. Stephen Clark number 12 number 23 Andre Howe deep for Vanden. tackle that time. From the 37. First down and five after the Georgia penalty. Rodgers will run it. Tries to turn that corner, nothing doing. As Sanders coming, came up and made the hit. Cummings is a junior, and he's been all over the place in the first half of the season for Georgia. He's broken up seven passes to lead the team. And he's fourth on the club in tackles with 24 coming in. Excellent football player, as you mentioned, Bobby. He has an outstanding nose for the ball at that cornerback position. Seems like he's always in the right place at the right time. Rodgers has time in complete at the 40-yard line. That pass. It's Sean Williams coming down from his safety position right there. Brandon Barton, they're trying to work the football to him across the middle. We've mentioned Sean Williams' name here a lot tonight. A few pass break up, also doing an outstanding job in the run game, coming down as that eighth man in the box. I was wondering if Barton had held it long enough, but obviously you could see it there. Incomplete, sets up third and long for the Commodores. Rodgers rolling, throws back over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Kraus. Good pressure by Jones. But that's two, down. two passes now that the defensive end, number 93, Avery Jones, is able to get his hands on. You see as he comes across the middle right here, he's able to get that big paw up 309 pounds. You see the athletic ability as he's able to extend. Good job by Jordan Rogers of finding Kraus right there, but Jones is the man on the spot. You may see him on Dancing with the Stars one day. <laughs> Punt. Toward the sideline and out of bounds. And this will be judged out at the 41 yard line. 23 yard punt. Let's take a look at our region's bank SEC greats. We focus in on Matthew Stafford, who had a terrific run in Athens as the Georgia quarterback. 51 lifetime touchdowns and what this young man has done to revitalize the Detroit Lions franchise at the quarterback spot has been nothing short of remarkable. It really has, and I'm a big fan of Matthew Stafford. Obviously, he's had some injuries early in his career, but so far this year, he's been healthy. You see the Lions having a, an unbelievable year. They're undefeated. He's got that big wide receiver, Calvin Johnson, to throw the football to. Nothing but great things ahead for Matthew Stafford. 139 remaining in this first half. Throws and complete. This is Brown making the grab. And Marlin takes it over the 45 to about the 47. Second and three with a minute 24 and counting. Squeeze it. 
and stops the clock with 107 left before halftime. And let's see what Mark Richter's thinking here on third and three. Murray, six for 14, one touchdown, that perfect strike to Tavares King. The only Georgia touchdown. Beauty. And this one is caught for a first down at the Vanderbilt 43 yard line. His favorite target tonight has been Tavares King. And that will move the chains on a 10 yard pickup. 101 and counting in this first half. Murray doing a nice job so far here in this two minute drill. Got to get a little bit more sense of urgency though and get the guys up to the line and get that football snap just a little bit quicker. Orson Charles takes it to the 34 yard line. Georgia has two times out at its disposal. Trey Wilson, the coverage for Vanderbilt. And a timeout will be used right here. So one left for Mark Richt after this. 40 seconds remaining in the hand. Let's go back and bring you up to date if you're just joining us tonight with our game summary. This was earlier in Georgia blocking the punt, then Vanderbilt are at the touchdown here to Tavares King. And then Vandy with its backup punter throwing to the center <laughs> on that fake. And then you get the running back throwing to the wide receiver. Two great throws, like we mentioned, two great throws by the punter and one by the running back. So <laughs> excellent job of converting there for Vanderbilt. Now Mark Rick comes out as James Franklin is, has to be proud of the fact that however they've gotten it done, they've outgained Georgia in this first half. 43 seconds left. And don't forget about the interception that Vanderbilt threw going into the end zone. This game would be even closer. And interception by Boykin. Murray throws. Change for Bennett. 37 seconds. And I'm wondering if there was a busted route. Yeah, it looked like Murray was had a little pressure right there, and he, he expected Michael Bennett to come out on the corner route. Bennett went inside on the post and wasn't able to adjust back outside to that football. Walker Bay, a defensive end for Vanderbilt. They have brought a lot of pressure to Aaron Murray tonight. They're going to bring it up the middle this time. The catch is made. And out of bounds at the 32-yard line as Orson Charles makes the grab. 33 seconds. Seven-yard pickup. And that's what you want to do in these two-minute drills. Not only get the football out of your hand quickly, but also work these sidelines, preserve your timeouts. Georgia has one timeout remaining here with 33 seconds, so you still want to work the sidelines as much as possible. 4 receivers. Murray zips it, top plate. Marlon Brown, touchdown Georgia. Well, Mark Rick is happy right there. You see him congratulating Isaiah Crowell, throwing a nice block for Aaron Murray on that play. But this is what good football teams do. They get points right before the half, converting on a two-minute drill. Excellent job right there by Aaron Murray of guiding his football team into the end zone. Penalty flag on the PAT. And conversely, this has been a bugaboo for Vanderbilt, giving up points. Prior to the snap, false start, 88 offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat the try. Yeah, you mentioned it, Bob, the last two weeks against South Carolina and, and Alabama, they've given up a touchdown right before the half when they were in this football game, you know, and they, they had an opportunity to go in this game feeling, and go into the locker room at halftime feeling good about themselves. Now they give up a touchdown and lose all the momentum that they had. Well, Blair Walsh has to back up five yards, still nails the PAT. Take a look here, see Aaron Murray standing tall in the pocket, able to find Marlon Brown. Not sure exactly. It looks like a little uh, mix-up in communication back there in the secondary. You see number one, Kenny Ladler, the safety, was probably supposed to be over the top of that route. Somehow got sucked down inside on the post route. Walsh 
Rice with the kick and a relatively short one fielded at the 13 yard line. Stephen Clark tripped as he was hitting a big hole. He down at the 31 yard line. Vandy has 23 seconds left to work with. First and 10 from the 31 yard line. 18 yard return. Georgia leading 20 to 7. Stay with us. Andre Aldridge has all the scores and highlights from around the big day of SEC football. He'll be along at halftime. Stays in at quarterback for Vanderbilt. Larry Smith got the start tonight. A couple of picks, and it was Rogers' turn. Throws, and it's incomplete at the 50. And a penalty flag. And a Georgia player is down, and that is Williams. Now gets up a late flag as Rambo may be charged with the foul. Following the play, dead ball, personal foul, 36 in the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. It is on Williams. Let's take a look here, see if we can see exactly what Sean Williams did after this play. As you see Bakari Rambo slide right there in front of, you just, just late. Ooh. Sean Williams comes in late right there, hitting, the, hitting the, a defenseless player in the back. Can't do that if you're Sean Williams. Got to keep your head about you. Wesley Tate was the man who took the punishment. So that gives Vanderbilt a first down at their own 46. 18 seconds left. And Vandy has one timeout remaining. Rogers avoids the sack once, twice. Scrambling. And he is thrown down back at the 47. Three seconds left in the half. And that time, it was Michael Gilliard who really finished him off. He really did at the end of that play, Michael Gilliard. A little aggressive, but I'll tell you what, how about Please the reset the game clock to four seconds. Four seconds. Let's take a look at the at the last play. The athletic ability of Jordan Rogers. I mean, you think of him more as a more of a passer, but he is quick and athletic and can absolutely run. You see him making plays. When he turns this thing up the field, he's got some speed to him now. He needs to learn how to get down at the end of this run. These guys are gonna be pretty physical with it. But you gotta love that ability that he brings this offense, the capability of making plays with his legs as well. Keep in mind it is gonna be Georgia option to receive in the second half. So Vandy down 13. Looks to score here on the final play of the first half. Rogers. Can he escape? No! A fumble! Still loose. George has got it. And a tackle at the 46-yard line. And that will be the end of the half as Ray Drew Ended up with that football. So we have reached the half here in Nashville, Tennessee. And the Georgia Bulldogs have a 20 to 7 lead over the Vanderbilt Commodores. Georgia bidding for its fifth consecutive victory overall and looking to tie up the top of the SEC East once again with South Carolina, who won earlier today in Starkville. Let's get out of the field and Christina with Coach Rick. All right, thanks, Bob. Isaiah Crowell did not play in the first quarter. What was the decision for him not getting in the game? He didn't play because I love him. Because you love right. him. That's a great answer. That's okay, a right. uh, few trick plays to keep Vanderbilt in this game, but you guys were able to get in the end zone near the end of the half. How does you capitalize on the momentum in the second half? Well, we are going to get the ball when we start the second half. We've got a good lead. Uh, not comfortable enough yet, but hopefully our offense will, you know, put together a, a real consistent drive and do something more more consistent than what we're doing. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, Thank you Christina. Halftime here in Nashville. With our score, Georgia 20 and Vanderbilt 7. Stay with us. 
Andre Aldridge with all the scores and highlights coming along from our Atlanta studio on the other side of the break. to Nashville, Tennessee, started the third quarter straight ahead with Georgia on top of Vanderbilt 22-7. And welcome back to the booth, everybody. Bob Rathbun and Tim Couch with you. Sort of a, an odd first half. Vandy used a couple of trick plays to stay in the game early. At one point, it was 10-7, but Georgia scored the last 10 points of the half to lead by 13. Yeah, they really did. Georgia has really not had a lot of consistency on their offense. They've had the two big plays for the touchdowns, but other than that, this Vanderbilt defense has kind of shut them down. Let's take a look at our Regions Bank first half numbers, and Vanderbilt picking up 176 yards, but that old bugaboo unable to convert on third down. Yeah, absolutely. Third down has been the Achilles heel for this Vanderbilt offense. We mentioned only converting 18%. That's last in the FBS. They have to do better in the second half if they want to continue to keep drives to going and keep their defense off the field. Mark Richt of the Georgia Bulldogs will get the football as we begin this third period of play. Brandon Boykin, who had that interception in the end zone, ready to receive the Kerry Spear kickoff as we begin the final half of play here from Nashville, Tennessee tonight. Back a yard deep in the end zone. And gets over the 20 to the 21 for the Bulldogs. Earlier, Christina had a chance to catch up with Coach Franklin. All right, thanks, guys. Coach, another situation where you gave up the touchdown at the end of the half. What did you say to you guys in the locker room to get some momentum going again? The biggest thing for us right now on defense is we're not creating the turnovers and getting the sacks that we got earlier in the year. We got to get back to that. On offense, you've gotten creative, been able to put points on the board. What are we going to see in the second half? Well, we got to do whatever we got to do to find a way to, to create some offense and create points. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you so much. Bulldogs have it first and 10 from their own 21. Nothing happening up the middle for Isaiah Crowell, benched in that first quarter by Mark Richt. He ended up with 34 first half yards on seven carries, one big gain of 24. Loses three on his initial carry of the second half. Second to 13. Traffic by Bennett, short of the first down. And a good job of recognition by Michael Bennett right there, seeing the side adjustment. It was a it was a Sam Mike blitz right there. Chase Garnum, Chris Marv came on the blitz to Aaron Murray's left side. He and Michael Bennett both were on the same page and were able to convert the slant route. Third down and two. One bank of lights has returned. They had a transformer blow in that uh, second quarter. Still one back on the far side is out, as you see. Looking to the sideline, King. One out of bounds, the 37 for the first down. Tavares King, who last year caught 27 balls for over 500 yards, came into this game tonight with 17 catches 266 yards, and King with a touchdown reception in that first hand. That's a good sign here for Bulldog fans. We've seen Aaron Murray and Tavares King miss each other on a couple big play opportunities earlier in the season. Tonight, they've converted on the big touchdown, and that time, able to convert the fade stop down the sideline. The give is to Samuel, and running room to the outside. And a big game for the Bulldogs over the Vandy 45 to the 44. 
18-yard pickup. Nice run here by Richard Samuel. Good job with the cutback ability right here. We've seen Isaiah Crowell do that a couple times here. Rich, we see Richard Samuel able to do almost the same thing. And the officials stop the play. First down and 10 for Georgia at the 45-yard line. An official's timeout. I think they're having some problems with the chains in front of the Georgia bench. Now they've got that straightened out. Georgia will sub Chris Conley in for King. And the freshman comes as a wide out to the bottom of your screen. Samuel. tackle but after a sizable pickup Javon Marshall was the man who made the tackle but Samuel again a, a strong run absolutely and this was set up by his fullback number 89 Bruce Figgins 272 pound fullback able to get the edge right there sealed so Samuel can get around Bob that's like having an extra guard in the game you know you have a 270 pound fullback doing an excellent job of lead blocking from Bruce Figgins 58 yards rushing for Samuel he comes out Crowell is in and movement everywhere The man in the white hat is Matt Austin. Prior to the snap, offside, 92 defense. Five yard penalty result for first out. And that's what you like to see out of your center, Ben Jones, right there. He's a senior. He's been in a lot of these football games. He saw movement over there on the left side with Kyle Westman, and he went ahead and snapped that football to Aaron Murray, who just take, takes a knee for an easy five yard pickup. First and 10 from the 31 yard line. Just the second penalty. Not Vanderbilt today. They average six per game for 50 yards. Now first and 10 for Georgia at the Vanderbilt 31. Play pick. Murray over the middle, and it's complete to Bennett at the 17. Nice catch in traffic. Chris Barb defending. This is what Michael Bennett gives you. He's a big body. He can work these inside routes, these slant routes, these skinny posts at six foot three, almost 210 pounds. He's not afraid to grow, go across the middle and use that big frame. Crowell to the outside. Puts the shoulder down over the 15. And out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. And Crowell gets up with a little injury right there. It looks like his right arm. He may have landed funny on that. He had the wrist injury last week against Tennessee, so hopefully for him that's not the same thing going on there. Second and six. This time, Samuel gets back to the line of scrimmage. Chris Marv, the tackle. We're talking with the Vandy coaches yesterday, and they were suggesting how, of course, Marv leads the defense, but they'd like to see him become the leader on the entire team. Well, absolutely, and, he, and the reason they want him to do that is because he has so much respect, not only of his defensive teammates, but the offensive guys. Coach Franklin wants him to get in those huddles, get in the special team huddles even, and get these guys fired up. Samuel lost five. He got back to the original line of scrimmage. From the Vanderbilt 18. Oh, Waits throws incomplete. Good coverage by Vanderbilt that time. So Blair Walsh will come in and try another field goal. Good pressure up top by Thomas. It's good job by Vanderbilt. They've done a nice job all game long here on in red zone defense. They were trying to work the football in the post to Orson Charles, but Kenny Ladler, Javon Marshall, both right there, had the inside-outside bracket coverage on Charles. Blair Walsh is two for four tonight, make it three for five. 
He drills this one with 10.06 to go in the third quarter, and Georgia stretches out the lead to 20-3 in Nashville. Top billing on that show. Oh, no doubt about that. And over under by Walsh. Hal from the four yard line. Nice seen. Walsh the kicker. He may be gone. He is. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. 96 yards. the distance. That's exactly what you need if you're Vanderbilt. You're struggling on offense to make the big plays. We heard James Franklin tell Christina coming out of the locker room at halftime, we got to find different ways to score, got to be creative. But running the kickoff back to start the third quarter here on their, on their first possession will certainly get things going for Vandy. The extra point is good. Take a look here, and Andre Howe just sees a seam right here, and it's just all about speed. He was never touched on this play. Great blocking by the Vanderbilt kick return team, and he makes a move on Walsh right there, and he's off to the races. Tremendous speed from Andre Howe. Take a look at it from up top. You see the, you see the lanes opened up right here. It's just a return to the left, and like I said, no one touches him. You, you can't let the kicker catch you, Bobby. You see he makes a little dip <laughs> to the inside right there, and Walsh has no chance. Two. And Vandy covers it, and he's down at the 22-yard line. Hold everything. Penalty flag? No, just the. There was a flag. Yes, I thought I saw the yellow hanky come out. And James Franklin is upset. See him telling his players, you know, they finally have Georgia back on their side of the of the uh, 20 or 30 yard line here. So he don't want to give a cheap penalty right here, a 15 yarder to set him up more towards Following midfield. Following the play, dead ball, personal foul, 36 of the receiving team, 15 yards to the end of the correction, half the distance to the goal at the end of the run, first down. This is Chase Garnum, his starting linebacker. You see the hit right there. He comes in with the punch to the face. I think that, that's Sean it's Williams. 39. Yeah, uh, 36. I think they said 39, but I believe it 39. was 36. Sean Williams that came in and uh, and delivered a blow to the head there after the play. So Georgia will have it at their own 12-yard line. Got to be careful here if you're Aaron Murray. This Vanderbilt secondary leads the nation in interceptions with 14. This is an opportunity for them. You know they're going to have to throw the football coming out of here, so got to be real careful if you're Aaron Murray. Georgia's worst starting position of the game. Completed pass to Bennett. And down at the 21. Murray and Crowell. Side by side on first and ten. Aaron will run. And a big chunk on first down. May have the first down. Looks like they'll credit him with eight before Casey Hayward made the tackle. So now the other number one, Brandon Smith, is in for Georgia. And the throw is complete to King. At the 41 yard line. Uh, Marlon Brown. And Murray doing a nice job right here. Coming out of his basically his own goal line down there. He's completed two passes and ran for a big game also so far on this drive. The first down for the Dogs. And Smith. Tight ropes at sideline. He was going to be out of bounds. 
at the 32-yard line. Well, Georgia just has so many athletes they can bring out. You see Brandon Smith, the cornerback. We've seen Brandon Boykin in there in the wildcat position. They have a lot of athletes on this football team that they can work in on both sides of the football. Murray throws complete to Tavares King. Nothing big, Tim, just 10, 12 at a time. But I really think this is what Mark Drick wants. He talked about consistency in the offense. It was all about big plays in the first half. So far in the second half, it's been about consistency. They've, Aaron Murray is perfect on this drive so far. He's in a great rhythm right now. He's throwing the football really accurately on these short to intermediate routes. Samuel has Vanderbilt's Archie Barnes came up and nearly took the handoff. And Samuel somehow got away from that hit. We've seen Archie Barnes make several plays tonight. He's had his hands on the ball twice. He's deflected two passes, and that time we see him in the backfield. Third and four. Fingertips of Marlon Brown before his momentum took him out of bounds. Oh, he Boy. was trying to stay in and <laughs> yeah. catch it all at the same hey, time. Casey Hayward is lucky right here. He Woo. guessed on this route. He thought it was going to be a comeback or a curl route right here. And Marlon Brown ran right by him. And Aaron Murray just throws it out of bounds. Boy, he's going to, he's going to be mad about that one in the film room tomorrow. So here comes Blair Walsh with another bomb. And this one is going to be good. So Blair Walsh from 44 yards. Tax on three. And our score now is Georgia 26 and Dandy 14. OK, Andre, 26-14 here. Georgia in front, 6.51 to play in the third quarter of the game's last, let's see, eight possessions. We've had seven scores. Georgia has scored in five consecutive possessions. And now kicks it away. Andre Hal from the eight. He took it back a moment ago. That was successful this time as Georgia gang tackles him at the 25-yard line. Time for tonight's Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff leaders. Aaron Murray, Tim, coming off a terrific last drive. He really is in the second half so far. He's seven out of nine for 89 yards, throwing the football efficiently. We've seen Brandon Boykin make the big interception in the end zone. And for, for Vanderbilt, Zach stacy has been running the football, catching the football, been a big playmaker for that Vanderbilt offense. Vandy has two touchdowns, one on the kickoff return and the other on the Stacy halfback pass. Dives to the 28. Vassar made the tackle for Georgia. Rodgers did a nice job right there just to get that football back to the line of scrimmage because Jarvis Jones came in the backfield unblocked right there. You don't make him miss very easily, but Jordan Rodgers very athletic back there to make him miss. Larry Smith began the game for Vanderbilt, but we haven't seen him since that second interception. Rodgers has been in since the second quarter. Pivots, wrapped up, and taken down. Georgia getting a big play from Ray Drew, their talented freshman outside backer. We see Ray Drew get in the backfield. They try to fake a screen over to the right and then get Aaron Rodgers back out on the edge to the left side, but Ray Drew playing his position out there on the outside and not letting anyone break contained to his side. Last year in Thomasville, Georgia, USA Today, first team All-America. That's Ray Drew's second sack on the night. Third and 13. Time to 
throw and complete over the middle. And making the grab is Sprouts. Leading receiver for Vanderbilt, this sophomore from Snellville, Georgia. Well, look at the pocket, Bob. Finally, Jordan Rodgers has an opportunity to sit in there and throw the football. And you see, when given time, he can find wide receivers, and he delivers the football accurately and quickly. He's throwing strikes in there when given time to throw it. Boy, Kraus took a big lick from Bakari Rambo. And he is struggling as he comes to the sideline. First and 10 from the 37. Out of the wildcat for Stacy. And as we've seen, can run or throw. And again, a penalty flag. How many times have we seen Vanderbilt come out in the Wildcat and have a procedure penalty? That's at least twice we've seen that right there. They're just a little antsy when they get in that formation. You know, there's a lot of pulling going on with those guards and things like that formation. Snap. False start. 62 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first out. We see 62 Ryan Seymour that time. Just a little little bit antsy. We're going to take a look at Kraus getting slammed right here. Looks like he possibly landed on that football, maybe knocked the wind out of him or something. But uh, you see Bakari Rambo coming in and being real aggressive at the end of that play. First and 15 from the 32 yard line. So they scrapped the Wildcat, now have a first and 15. And Rodgers goes out of the gun. Stays in the motion man. Over the middle and complete. Intended for Matthews. Good pressure by Jones. Second and 15. Well, Mark Rick, he could read his lips. That's no flag. Offside, defense 29, five yard penalty, still second down. I like what Jordan Rodgers did right there. It's the intangible, intangibles of playing the position of quarterback. He just had a penalty at second 15. You want to come back up the next down and hard cam him, try to get that penalty yardage back, and he was able to do that at that time, driving uh, Jarvis Jones offside. Franklin's upset with Rodgers. He wants him to move a little bit quicker right there and get the team in and out of the play. 4.31 to go in the third timeout in Nashville. The Parthenon in Nashville. Saturday night, SEC college football. And a 26-14 lead for Georgia, Vandy Ball. And they have it second and 10 from their own 37. Stacy. Good game. Get a first down. Brandon Smith with the tackle. First down, Vanderbilt. All spotted. Just past the 47. Snap Stacy into Georgia territory at the 42. Jarvis Jones caught up with him, but could not prevent another Vanderbilt first down, 11 yard gain. Boy, Stacy is hard to tackle once he gets outside to the perimeter right here. Once you make the move on Brandon Boykin right there, right in the hole. Brandon Boykin, usually a pretty good tackler out there in space, but Zach Stacy made him miss. Vanderbilt trailing by 12. 
the Dogs 41. Good tackle by John Jenkins up the middle. Big John, who started again tonight for his second consecutive week, his first year in the program, after coming over from Gulf Coast Community College in Mississippi. He and Gathers have been simply outstanding at the nose. They really are. They're just the anchors in this 3-4 defense. They, they're both over 350 pounds. They require a double team. The center and the guard have to work together to get any type of movement on these guys. Good read by Rogers, and then he picks up yardage to the 36 before Avery Jones nailed it. Third and medium. Yeah, you called it, Bob. That was a good read by Jordan Rogers right here. Watch number 29, Jarvis Jones. He takes the pitch man, so the only option that Jordan Rogers has is to cut that thing up and get it and get all he can get. Just get a couple yards and set up this third down. And short. Reception by Chris Boyd, and Rodgers got nailed from the blind side. He really did, and this throw looked a little bit like his brother Aaron right here as he just throws a dart to the back shoulder to Chris Boyd as he gets drilled. Watch the catch, though, by Chris Boyd. He just takes it right off the head of, of Jordan Love. Jordan Love never sees the football coming. Chris Boyd's season is able just to reach over the top of Jordan Love and, and secure that catch and set Vanderbilt up here in the red zone. You'll look on the play-by-play -play sheet and it'll say 23-yard pass completion. That doesn't That's even a, begin to tell the story. <laughs> Jack Stacy moves the pile down to the 15. Well, James Franklin has to be encouraged by this drive. We've seen Vanderbilt convert, convert a third and long situation with Rodgers able to hit Krause over the middle on the big catch there, and then they've converted the second and 15, and now they get the big play down the sideline. So excellent drive here in this third quarter from Vanderbilt. South Carolina, very good defensively. We know all about Alabama, but Coach Franklin was telling us yesterday, we got better from Alabama, uh, from South Carolina to Alabama in running the football. The stats don't show it, right. but we did a better job, and you're seeing the payoff of the hard work tonight. No doubt about it. There's another good defensive team. Rodgers. Cranks and throws, and it's incomplete at the five-yard line. The intended receiver was... U2, Udom Umo, and incomplete. 58 seconds to go in the third quarter. We talked about how Vandy has improved on third downs. They started this game one for seven on third down. They're two for two since. So good job of going in the locker room, making some adjustments to, to be able to keep these drives alive. Tim, you've got third down here from the 10, third and about seven. What do you think the play call might be here? What well, options is he have? I think you got to expect blitz right here from Jordan in this situation. Maybe work something over the middle. It'll be a run up the middle. To the one yard line. First and goal, Vanderbilt. Well, I, re I really like what Jordan Rogers is doing right now. He's in a great rhythm, throwing the football, and I love his athletic ability. He brings this offense. You see, they spread this Georgia defense out, expecting the blitz out on the edges from the two linebackers, and they just hit him right up the middle with Jordan Rogers. So make it three for three for Vanderbilt on third down to the second half. Commodores hustle up to the line. And stretching out, touchdown, Vanderbilt, Gerard Seymour. Spear to attempt the PAT. And this is a five-point ball game. Okay, just an excellent drive right here, capped off here by the touchdown 
by Jordan C. Jerron Seymour. I'm sorry, excellent job. Just all effort right here. You saw Jarvis Jones had him hit. He made contact with him on about the three-yard line, but Jerron Seymour kept the leg drive going, was able to extend that football. Spear to kick it off. I'd have to go back and check, but I've got to believe that's the best drive they've had in three weeks. Oh, I think so, and I think they have to be excited about Jordan Rodgers. You know, they came in last week in the Alabama game, had an excellent first half. The second half, he had a couple mistakes, but so far here in this game, he looks like the quarterback of this football team to me. Here comes Boykin. There is a flag on the play. Boykin coughs it up. Let's see if he was ruled down. I believe he was. A lot going on, and the penalty is going to go against Georgia for a hole. And Boykin's limping off the field right there. He took a shot During the to return, the five. Holding number three in the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. 20 seconds left in the period. Sellers was caught for the hold. And this will move the football back. They're going to mark it, I believe, inside the 10. Yes, at the 8. This is a big, big, uh, big stop right here, opportunity for this Vanderbilt defense to get their offense, a hot offense, get them back out on the field. The last time we saw Georgia in this situation, Aaron Murray came out firing and drove them down the field. So Vanderbilt defense has to come out and be stout in this situation. Marv jumps into that. A gap, and here comes Murray. He's hit as he throws, and this one is complete out to the 25-yard line. Another great catch by Bennett, and Murray is down. Help to his feet. Boy, did he take a shot. He really did, and this is what you want to see from the quarterback. You know as a quarterback, you're going to have to stand in there. and Look at that throw, Bob, over the outstretched hands of number one, Kenny Ladler, as he's getting hit right in the face in his own end zone. Great job right there, standing in that pocket and throwing a strike from Aaron Murray. Three seconds, two, one. That's the end of the period. We got a ball game, folks. Georgia, 26, Bandy, 21 after three. Sprint Unlimited update. And a tight one here as we go to the fourth quarter with Georgia leading Vanderbilt 26 to 21. Dogs with it. Crowell hit as he gets the handoff for Murray. Hayward coming up with a big hit. No gain. Second and ten. Momentum has no allegiance, but right now it's on the Vanderbilt sideline. Yeah, no doubt about that, Bob. Vanderbilt is playing with a lot of emotion right now in this football game. They fake the blitz. Murray. Matt checks on the two backers. And Murray checked out of that. He changed to trying to get something down the field, but Vanderbilt also rechecked, so Murray has to be careful. The coverage changed. Incomplete off the fingertip of Aaron White as he tried to one-hand it, and an incomplete pass sets up third and ten. It was an interesting chess match at the line of scrimmage right there between Aaron Murray and the middle linebacker Chris Marv for this Vanderbilt defense. Murray recognizing the blitz, tried to get himself protected, change the play, get something down the field to hurt this Vanderbilt defense, but Chris Marv recognized that as well and got his football team into the right defense. Steps up and unloads down the sideline, complete. Marlon Brown is going to be gone for the touchdown. 75 yards. It's 
been about the big plays for this Bulldog offense. Aaron Murray hitting on some big touchdown throws that time. Finds Marlon Brown again up that sideline. It looked like almost a similar situation as we had before the half. The safety got sucked down inside in that zone defense. And Aaron Murray was able to buy himself some time, extend the play, and find Marlon Brown wide open down the sideline. As we take a look here, you see, watch Aaron Murray in the pocket as he slides, steps up in the pocket, kind of extends the play, and that sucks number one, Kenny Ladler, down inside because he thinks Murray possibly may tuck that football and run. You take a couple false steps down inside, you lose track of where these wide receivers are, and Marlon Brown is able to get behind the secondary. Second time that Murray and Brown have hooked up, 27 yards. Right before the half, the tip talked about, that made it 20-7. to seven. Now, a 75-yarder from Aaron Murray. And Georgia builds the lead back to a dozen. Third touchdown pass tonight for Aaron Murray. And I think most more importantly than the three touchdowns is zero interceptions for Aaron Murray. He had a little bit of problems throwing interceptions so far this season. And Vanderbilt, like I said earlier, leads the NCAA in interceptions, 14 interceptions on the season. But Aaron Murray doing a great job of protecting the football and not hurting his football team. Four plays, 91 yards. It took a minute 29. And Georgia has now scored on six consecutive possessions. Now Jordan Rodgers and this Vanderbilt offense is going to have to come out and answer that score right there by Georgia. So Blair Walsh is ready to kick it deep. Marlon Brown having a big night tonight. Two touchdowns on four catches. So Blair Walsh to boom it. Andre Hall has already taken one back for a touchdown of 96 yards in the third quarter. And that is he standing on his own four. teams tackle that time as we go down to the field and Christina Bob this uh, Georgia coaching staff was really excited for Marlon Brown to get back to 100% injury knocked him out for a couple of games but they said he's been back in action he brings a physicality to the position he's a veteran and when he's at practice and involved in the offense everything's crisper and cleaner and to make it better that that touchdown for him he's mr. he was mr. Tennessee in 2009 so this is kind of a homecoming for him his second in a row after being at University of Tennessee last week now scoring in this game here in Nashville he's a Memphis kid a big kid too Tim 6'5 222 oh no doubt about it he's what you want as a quarterback that big frame that big target but also the speed to take it to the house oh, nice cutback by Zach Stacy so you Stacy's been doing this the whole game they've been able to to run the football so effectively we talked about how good Georgia has been against the run the last four games especially in their four game win streak but Vanderbilt has came in here tonight they're able to run the football consistently against that front line. 126 yards on the ground for Vanderbilt today. First and 10 from the 31. Rodgers will keep it. Looks to throw, throws it away. Good decision. I tell you what, that shot of him as we look as he's calling the play. <laughs> Straight on. If you took the Vanderbilt helmet off and put a Green Bay helmet on. Very similar. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Twins. No doubt about it. He looked like his brother on that last drive for sure, standing in the pocket, throwing footballs. You know, that back shoulder throw, certainly you see Aaron Rodgers do that quite a bit in Green Bay with Greg Jennings hitting that back yeah. shoulder. He was able to do that with Chris Boyd on that last drive. So certainly some uh, similarities. And there's a the cheese head. Oh, they're, the all, they're everywhere. <laughs> Rodgers. Knocked down to 38. And a penalty flag as we've got a flare up at the 40 yard line. Gathers for Georgia. He's hot. Looked like Gathers and Logan Stewart, the center from Vanderbilt. A little scuffle after the play. We'll see what these officials sort out. 
There's the sophomore, Logan Stewart. Crowd is. You can hear him hooting and hollering underneath us. It was a gain of seven on the play. And I think every official on the field saw that there are five penalty flags on the field. <laughs> Not sure exactly what happened. I kind of looked up late there, Bob, but I think Gathers may have threw a punch there at the end of that play on Logan Stewart. We saw Stewart's helmet come off. If that's the case, we may have an ejection here. See, Kwame has gone to the sidelines. Let's we'll see what Matt Austin has to say. The final arbiter. Two fouls. The offsetting. So a clip on Vandy, personal foul on Georgia. Take a look down here at the at the bottom of the screen. Gathers on Stewart as they get up right here. See the push. Yeah, he gave him the punch while he was on the ground right there. So the officials saw that as well. So after all that, now the officials get together again. The personal foul is going to give Vanderbilt a first down. <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> Avery Jones, the tackle. So we're seeing a lot of things going on after the plays, a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. You see these two teams are, are jawing pretty good back and forth. Got to be careful in these situations. Don't want to hurt your football team getting a cheap penalty. 76 yards for Zach Stacy on 14 carries. Rodgers. Penalty flag. And Rodgers out of bounds, shy of a first down. Gonna be holding coming back on Vanderbilt. Too bad here for Jordan Rogers made an outstanding play of nothing down the field and just tucking that thing and getting and able to get to the edge. The penalty will move the football back to the 27 yard line. Just the fourth penalty against the Commodores. 12 22 to play in the game. Clock now moving. And second and 21 for Jordan Rogers. Vanderbilt trailing 33 21. For Georgia, you got to be alert for the screen pass right here to Jerron Seymour trying to get a little bit of that penalty yardage back for Vandy. Rodgers will run. And a great run it is over the 50, still going. <laughs> down to the 33, first down Vanderbilt. A 40-yard pickup. Well, you have second 21. You can throw the screen and try to get a little bit of the yardage back, or you can just let your quarterback run for 40 yards. I'll tell you about, I'm shocked at how athletic Jordan Rodgers is. He can run the football. I mean, he's not afraid of these guys in the secondary. He's going, he's breaking runs. He's seeing the field well once he gets out there. And I, you know, I, you know, I, I came in thinking Larry Smith would be the more athletic of the two, but it's actually the opposite. Jordan Rodgers certainly has a lot of mobility and able to make plays with his legs. 
Well, it's certainly the rep that Smith was the runner of the two. But Rodgers has played a terrific game. Seymour. John Seymour in the carry. Down to the 29, a pickup of four. Bass of the tackle. Approaching the 11 minute mark in the ball game. Quick toss to Stacy. A cut to Seymour. And he'll take it to the 27. Now Vandy comes out. Third down and four. Option. Pass. Stacy's going to throw it again into double coverage. A penalty flag thrown at the five. Looks like they may get Sanders coming for holding down here on the wide receiver. Try to get the football into Jordan Matthews again on the halfback pass. Before the pass was thrown, holding defense number 19. Ten yard penalty for the previous spot, automatic first down. Key there before the pass was thrown. Right, let's take a look here, you see this halfback pass, they're going to try it again with Zach Stacy. You get the flow. You see all the flow just again. See the hold right there as he comes out of his break. He's trying to work. Jordan Matthews is back to the corner right there. And Sanders coming wraps the, wraps the arm around the waist before the pass. Ten penalties on Georgia tonight. 84 yards. Out of the Wildcat. Stacy. Zach Stacy on the carry. To the 13. Avery Jones, another tackle. Stacy. That's his 15th carry. Under 10 to play. 80 yards for Stacy. He comes out. Fullback Lassing. At the backfield with Rogers. Hold everything, says Matt Matt's Austin. Ball start, 38 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. And that is the fullback, Fitz Lansing. And it looked like Vanderbilt was going to come back with that same play. They were faking the screen out to the left. They were going to run the quarterback draw there with Jordan Rogers. So Fitz Lansing just trying to get an extra little a head start there before he gets that block for Jordan Rogers. Georgia makes its defensive substitutions. Second down and 12. Second and 12 for the 19 yard line. Vanderbilt will try to work the football into Brandon Barden, their tight end down here in this situation. Really hadn't heard from him tonight so far. Option to Stacy. Nice cut back. Big hole! Touchdown! Vanderbilt's had the football three times in the second half, and they've scored on all three. They have definitely been impressive, I'll tell you. It's been uh, it's been pretty impressive to see what, what, what all they're capable of doing with Jordan Rodgers in there, quarterback. He allows you to do so many things on offense. Here's one of them. As you see, he can run the option, get down the line. You have to respect his running ability, but he pitches this one to Zach Stacy, and he does the rest for the Vanderbilt touchdown. Thank you, Andre. 33-28 now. Georgia's lead has again been reduced to five with 9.15 to play in the fourth quarter. Zach Stacy's 19-yard touchdown run cuts it to five. The question, can Vandy's defense get a stop? Over the two halves, Georgia has scored on six consecutive possessions. Field goals and touchdowns. Boykin from the five. And they pin him inside the 20. Let's take a look at our Z-Max performance recap tonight. Aaron Murray has passed for 298 yards. And that is a new career high. Zach Stacy, 98 yards. 
on 16 carries, a 43-yard halfback touchdown pass, and he's caught two balls for 16. First and 10 dogs at the 19. And this Vanderbilt defense should be fresh. Their offense has had a lot of long drives here in the second half, so they should be able to come out here with a lot of momentum. Threw that one, I believe, right into the back of his left guard, Dallas Lee. Yeah, Murray wanted to pull that one back. You see him and his fullback right there, Alexander Ogletree, there. they had a little bit of a miscommunication, and Murray was going to deliver the football right there, and he saw a Vanderbilt defender jump right in front of Ogletree and kind of try to pull that one back and ended up hitting the defensive lineman in the head. Second and ten. Samuel in it, running back. Orson Charles, but wrapped up upon the reception at the 21. Third and long coming. Javon Marshall over to make the tackle. Vanderbilt defense just continues to bring the blitz on Aaron Murray. They're making him throw the football quickly and get, to, get it out of his hands for these short little dump throws. And these safeties are all over Orson Charles so far in this game. Javon Marshall that time on the coverage. Murray now at 300 yards passing. The Vandy faithful making noise in support of the defense on third and long. Murray cranking to the far side and Tavares King's got the first down. At the 31 for Georgia, nine-yard pickup, and Murray had a lot of real estate to uh, work what with. What a big league throw here. You see the center, Ben Jones, picking up the safety blitz, and you see the arm strength of Aaron Murray, able to throw that football with timing and accuracy from the far hash to Tafaris King for the big third down conversion. Intended receiver, second and ten. Excellent coverage on the play that time by Casey Hayward. He was all over that curl route, forcing Aaron Murray just to throw that football high and away. Murray has attempted 35 passes of the game. With no interceptions against this Vanderbilt defense, that's pretty impressive, doing a great job of taking care of that football. Bounds at the 35. Four-yard pickup. Vince Taylor over to get him. The redshirt freshman from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. He hustles off as the change personnel. Third and seven. Tavares King was out. And Georgia will be forced to punt. Vandy got the stop. They did. You know, that's what they did exactly what they had to do. You see Aaron Murray taking the long throw out here. Fits it in there perfectly in this cover two zone. Tavares King just can't get those feet down. Just out of bounds right there. But good job of switching up their coverage. Vanderbilt elected to play a cover two zone on that third down. We have seen previously on most of the third down, they've, they've tried to blitz Aaron Murray and get the football out of his hand. Good job of switching things up from their defensive coordinator, Bob Shute. Amador sent Hayward deep. They've got 10 up on the line. But now relax the pressure as Hayward takes it for the 19. Out to the 30-yard line. Here's the second Georgia punt for Drew Butler, and it's a 47-yarder. 
AT and SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by C Spire Wireless, by Coors Light, and by Hyundai. Welcome back to Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, and what a game this has turned out to be. 7:03 to go, 33-28 Georgia, and time for tonight's hardest working player. Brought to you by Polaris. Hard to deny Zach Stacy. He's done a little bit of everything tonight. He really has. Almost 100 yards rushing, two catches, and then he's thrown a 42, 43-yard touchdown pass as well. They're going to need him here on this drive. They're down five with seven minutes to play, so we're going to see Zach Stacy a lot on this drive. The defeated Georgia in this ballpark in 20 years is tonight the night they're down five 7 3 to play and they've scored every time they've had the ball in the second half Rogers quick throw and it's batted down the Vanderbilt Commodores came into this ball game having accumulated a grand total of 45 rushing yards in their last two games, losses to South Carolina and Alabama. And against a Georgia defense that was one of the best of the conference, 200. Rodgers under center. Stacy. And the Dawgs force a third and long. Jarvis Jones, second on the bar club and tackles coming into this game with a big one right there. And it's going to be third and about 11. Stacy comes on as Rodgers works out of the gun. Empty backfield, four receivers. is able to pick it up at the eight. Boy, that was nearly a disaster for Vanderbilt. It really was, but that's a good job right there by Jordan Rogers. He almost fell down, but he was able to keep his feet and recover that football while he was being hit. That's big because now they can punt this football out of here because their defense is playing really good. They got to stop on Georgia the last time. So great hustle play by Jordan Rogers, getting back there and getting on that football. Now Ryan Fowler is the man in his own end zone. Punches it out, and a fair catch made by Boykin at the 46-yard line. Sanders. And boom up the middle. He takes it to the Vandy 40. This is the third time tonight that Georgia has started to drive in Vanderbilt territory. Georgia content to run some of this clock. Take their time. Play clock now under 10. Game clock under five. Murray gets it to the sideline complete at the 24-yard line. And there's Michael Bennett again. Bennett with his seventh catch of the night. Yeah, Bennett's been big tonight in this football game. You, you see him tapping the helmet, wanting to come out there. He took a shot in the back, but good job here. They run the corner route. They find the zone coverage. Good timing right there by Aaron Murray, finding Michael Bennett. He's becoming his go-to guy in this football game. First and 10 at the Vandy 25. Just couldn't break it to the outside. Donnell Thomas, number 98, had him around the waist and wouldn't let him go. 
Bob Shoup, the defensive coordinator for Vanderbilt, had the right play call on that time. They had a blitz to that side, and Georgia ran right into the teeth of that defense. Second and 13. Comes the blitz. You see Aaron Murray looking to the sideline, trying to get audible. Watch Chris Marv tapping his helmet. He's readjusting his defense, going back to probably another cover two zone here. Samuel. Three fifteen and counting. Lower the tackle. Rob's played a big game tonight. No gain on the play. Samuel has 56 yards total. Third and 14. Clock becoming a factor. Georgia leading by five. Play clock at six. Five. Hurry. Right. Everybody showing blitz. Down the sideline. It is going to be intercepted by Vanderbilt. Casey Hayward with the pick. This Vanderbilt secondary that we talked about, 14 interceptions on the campaign. And when they needed one the most, the first Georgia turnover. Well, you see the blitz coming at Aaron Murray. He has to get rid of that football and watch Casey Hayward. The technique that he uses right there on Marlon Brown, he pins him to the sideline. He doesn't give Aaron Murray any room to throw that football and drop it in over the shoulder. Great technique right there by Casey Hayward. Four INTs coming into this game, make it five for Casey Hayward. Now Vanderbilt has the football on their own two. They've got to go 98 yards in two minutes and 30 seconds. Rodgers under center. Gets away. No safety. Yards running and spun out of bounds as Rodgers shy of the first down. Sanders Cummings with a tackle. I, I don't know how he gets out of this play. I mean, it's instant pressure right up the middle. From Big 99, Kwame gathers 350 pounds draped all over his shoulders. And Jordan Rodgers, you know, is only 200 pounds. He's able to somehow slide out of that play right there and gain nine yards on that carry. Second and one. 2.05 to play in the game. Rodgers throws, batted down. Cummings was right there, stride for stride, with the Jordan Matthews. Had an opportunity right there. Matthews had half a step. He threw it in there a little bit flat, Rodgers did. If he puts the ball with a little more arc on it down towards the sidelines and allows Jordan Matthews to adjust to it to the outside, they may have had a chance on that one. Incomplete pass stops the clock with 154. Third down and one. Batted down at the line of scrimmage by Avery Jones. I believe that's three batted balls now yes. for Avery Jones in this football game, doing an excellent job of getting those big paws on the football. We'll take a look at Avery right here coming from his defensive end position. Jordan Rodgers knows he only needs one yard. He's got an open man out in the flat right there. He was trying to work the football to Jerron Seymour, but Avery Jones wasn't having it. Got to get it here, fourth and one. A minute 51 to play. Got to expect Jordan Rodgers on the quarterback draw here. He's got the first down and then some. Ran into the umpire and goes down at the 25-yard line. A gain of 14. Clock stops as they reset the chains. A minute 46 to go. Boy, hasn't Rodgers done a great job running the football tonight? 
He really has. He's doing an excellent job. And like I said earlier, he allows you to do so many things as a play caller. For the offensive coordinator, John Donovan, he can call a number of different plays. You can spread the football. Jordan can throw it accurately and quickly. He can also tuck and run. So a lot of different options with Jordan Rodgers back there at the quarterback position. Rodgers goes over the middle, and that's incomplete. Nearly picked off by Brandon Boykin. Wesley Tate was the intended receiver. By that time, they put Brandon Boykin in the slot in the nickel defense right there, and he's running stride for stride with Wesley Tate. He's, he's good in that coverage. They like to put Boykin inside in that nickel defense because he's really good in space right there, running with those wide receivers down the seams. And he has two times out remaining, second and 10, and a minute 18 left. Rodgers, pocket collapses, but he has time, and it's intercepted by Georgia at the 45-yard line. Bakari Rambo with the pick to save the day. Well, Vanderbilt must have thought that they had something right there. They called the exact same play from the previous play. Jordan Rodgers trying to work the football into Wesley Tate, matched up on Brandon Boykin. Again, this time, the football sails on him just a little bit. That's a tough throw to try to squeeze in there. Bakari Rambo, had four INTs coming into the year, so now he has his fifth, though him and uh, Casey Hayward are still tied for five INTs in the SEC. 70 seconds remaining in the ball game, and Makari Rambo with the pick, the fourth Vanderbilt turnover of the game. You, know, you, you said about four turnovers. In this Vanderbilt football team, and they're had a, they had a chance to win this football game. That's pretty impressive how well they played tonight with four turnovers. Substitution infraction on the offense, breaking the huddle with 12 players. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So the two teams atop the SEC East. On the road today, South Carolina pulled it out of the fire at Mississippi State, and it looks like Georgia's going to hang on, and they will remain tied. Vandy can stop the clock twice. Samuel to the 45. Fugger the tackle. Samuel, nothing. Marr finished him off at the 41. Now Bandy will stop it with 101 to play. Fox begins on the snap. To the 45-yard line for Samuel. And right, now Georgia can run out the clock here in the final 47 seconds. Or run it down, I should say, toward the end. They have a fourth down situation, but they can take, take it down to 15 seconds left on the punt. Hayward is the deep man. Better build, obviously, we will be trying to block this punt. Everyone at the line of scrimmage. And Georgia will take their time out here. Time out of the half. At 15 30 seconds. seconds time out. As we mentioned, the dogs are off next week. And Mark Rick was telling us they're ready for that off week. They need a breather. They've been going hard right straight through since camp began. But then it's down to Jacksonville to take on the Gators, a non-conference game before ending with Auburn, Kentucky, and the annual season under with Georgia Tech. And I really like the way Georgia's schedule sets up for them to be a real serious contender in the East. You know, you look at their schedule, there's no LSU on there, there's no Alabama for them to play. And I no think Arkansas. Really, no Arkansas. Really, the, the toughest thing that they're going to have moving forward, they're all tough in the SEC, but the, really, you know, the, the, the away game there at Georgia Tech, the last game of the year, obviously be a tough one. But this Georgia football team is capable of running the table and pulling out an SEC East title. Oh. It is blocked! Bandy 
He's got it! Loose ball! And down to the 19. They needed the block. They got it. There's seven seconds to go in the game. The only chance that Vandy had was to block the punt. Unbelievable what just happened. I'm not sure who was got, who got in there and got their hand on the punt. It may have been Udom Umi. We'll take a look here on the replay. Let's see who got in here. Coming off the edge, it is number four. Udom Umi, he comes in right there unblocked and gets a big block for this Vanderbilt and sets, and sets their offense up. And Jordan Rodgers has life. Seven seconds to go in this football game. No timeouts on the clock for Vanderbilt. Have to take the ball into the end zone on this play. Hey, Georgia's lucky they didn't score on oh, that they're, play. They're extremely lucky they didn't score on that play. Yeah, he, 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 when he recovered the football, he just couldn't keep his feet to get in the end zone. But there's life here in this stadium. These fans are excited. A touchdown wins it for Vanderbilt. Penalty flag. Substitution infraction on the offense. 12 minutes in formation. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And, and I think that's a result of, of just not being prepared. You know, I, obviously you don't think you're going to block that punt. The offense thinks the game's over. And they're, they're not expecting to all of a sudden have to run out on the field. They're trying to get a play called, get the right formation, get the right people in the formation. Just a little bit of miscommunication on the sideline. And, and Franklin's certainly not happy about it. From the 25-yard line and a chance to win it for Vanderbilt. And now Georgia's going to talk about it defensively. Final they turn their final half. timeout. A game that seemingly was over on the interception. Vanderbilt comes up with an incredible play to block this punt by Drew Butler. Yeah, you see number four, Udom Umi, just comes in there. No one even put a hand on him right there, and he's able just to get get the get the block. But you see Vanderbilt recovers that thing. Clark gets a hold of it. But, uh, yeah, Georgia very lucky that he wasn't able to scoop that thing and score and win this football game for Vanderbilt. Mark Rick's team gets the pick. They take the clock down as far as they can before the fourth down punt. I'll tell you, just a, a oh, half of man. huge plays. It's like back and forth. Yeah. These teams are just throwing haymakers at each other. With you know, we've seen a kick return for a touchdown. We've seen a 75-yard touchdown pass from Aaron Murray. Just a, a half full of huge plays. Seven seconds to go. Rodgers to the end zone, and it is going to be incomplete. One, one second. second left. They've got time for another play. What a great throw. Jordan Rodgers actually hit Chris Boyd with this football. This was a, a, a catchable ball for Chris Boyd. Let's take a look. You see Rodgers puts it up high for a six foot three wide receiver. And that <laughs> ball is just off the fingertips of Chris Boyd, the uh, six foot three red shirt freshman. The final play of the game. One second left. Got to think he's going to go right back to Chris Boyd on this play. The throw complete. But Georgia makes the tackle, and they escape Nashville with the win. And Jordan Rodgers got his arm hit on that play. He was trying to go to the end zone with that, just couldn't get enough on the football as he was being hit right as he was delivering that football. We see Grantham and Franklin exchanging words down there on the field. Boy, how about that? It's been like this the whole game. These two teams have been going at each other, a lot of jawing. They need to get these guys off the field off right the now. Off the field. The referees have left. And the coaches are left to try to separate the two ball clubs. Not sure exactly what happened between uh, defensive coordinator Todd Grantham and head coach from Vanderbilt, James Franklin, right there, but certainly some heated exchange of words walking off the field. Meanwhile, there is an injured player down at the 10-yard line. It's a it's, Georgia player. It's Bakari Rambo yep. down there. 
Th it looks like possibly a cramp. They're trying to work on his calf right there. But they get the teams separated. And back toward the locker room. A bizarre ending in Nashville. But Georgia wins it 33-28. What a football game. We'll be back to wrap it up in Nashville right after this. Folks, this, these are the fans who won the game, and they're not quite <laughs> sure what they just saw. Vanderbilt had a chance on two plays in the last seven seconds to win it, but Georgia holds on to win. Let's go down to the field where earlier Christina got up with quarterback Aaron Murray. All right, thanks, Bob. Aaron, a big night, big win for you guys, a career night for you. How do you feel about your performance tonight? Oh, I'm just happy with the win. Uh, it, was, it was a tough game. They played a great game, uh, came down the wire. So I'm just just happy we got the W and get out of here, get a nice little bye week and get ready for Florida. With Malcolm Mitchell out, your receivers were able to step up tonight, make big plays, specifically Marlon Brown. Talk about the progression of this offense and just how you guys have been to this point in the season. Oh, we have a lot of weapons. Um, and then a lot, like you said, a lot of guys stepping up. Marlon did a great job tonight. Uh, Should have had three touchdowns. I missed them on one, but um, like I said, we have a lot of talent. Guys mixing in, uh, in, in and out all year long, so we'll be fine. All right, thanks so much, Aaron. Thank you. Aaron Murray passing for a career-high 300 tonight as Georgia wins 33-28. That is our final score here tonight from Nashville, Tennessee. The final score, Georgia 33, Vanderbilt 28. Our next game will come up on Saturday, October the 29th, SEC College Football Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Check your local listings. For Christina Acra, Tim Couch, our producer Jay Hoover, our director Mike Miller, and the great men and women of our crew, this is Bob Rathman thanking you for joining us so long from Nashville.